Parents, what kind do you have? How do they bother you? What are they indicating? That's what we're going to see this week. Stay tuned. Here's the main ant that people don't like, mainly because it will come into your house. These are carpenter ants, just as their name implies, they are carpenters. Actually, they're technically they're not quite carpenters because they don't build, they destroy. <laughs> but they don't just destroy anything, they destroy places that have been softened by uh, usually just water infiltration. So carpenter ants can only excavate wood that is already softened by fungus. And you have to have had fungus in your walls or mushrooms growing, not necessarily a mushroom like we think of it, but a fungi to soften up the wood and then they can excavate it. So you'll usually see carpenter ants if you've had some kind of structural damage. They'll also be found in some insulations, in styrofoam, in uh, foam insulations, they can excavate those. I know we have them in our ceiling that we put foam insulation and boy, they like that. And so they're, they're indicators of some damage happening in your house, if you have them in your house. And if ever you want to find out where is their tunnel, maybe you want to destroy them, then you actually can look at them. And when you see the abdomen or the part, here's another one, you look at the tail end. And if the tail end is expanded or blown up, you say, how can I tell? You need a few of them to compare. But if the tail end is really full, then you know that that ant is actually going back to the nest. And that's a good way. You follow the one that's expanded, that's full, and follow where it goes. And it will lead you right to the hole of wherever is the entrance or the exit from your wall. And if ever you want to spray something, use diatomaceous earth. It works really quite well against the ants to uh, destroy them right at the nest. But carpenter ants is usually one that people don't really want to have in their house. Where'd that one go? That's, that's one of the ones that, nah, maybe you don't love those. But they're an indicator of something structurally that can be going on wrong. If you're really infested, chances are you've got a wall that's pretty seriously rotten in the house. Time to check that out. So here's the kind of habitat carpenter ants love. This tree is dead. It's, it's well in decomposition and it makes it very easy for carpenter ants to tunnel around in there. Yeah. I don't know if they're actually in here or if it just looks like they should be in here. Looks like they should be in here. But that's usually the kind of habitat. It might not be a totally dead tree. It might be a live tree with a dead core or the core is rotten. Then that's where they will excavate and live. So dead is certainly an indication of carpenter ants dead and fung fungal, fungused, mushroomed, rotted, whether it's a tree or beams in your house. There's another kind and I'm no ant expert. I've watched ants a lot 
I don't know any ant species other than carpenter ant, but these are common little red ant. I don't know, I call them the red ones. They're common ant that are found in our soils. And there's, I would say thousands or maybe even hundreds of thousands of species of ants. These just happen to be one of the ones that are found in our area. And they're doing basically the same thing as worms do. See, this one's actually bringing material or grains of sand from deep in the ground and putting it outside of its hole. Now you can see these, look at their cones right here. That's not much of a cone. That's actually very low. Did you know that ants can indicate the weather? You might as well just get out of anywhere along this 60 here. It's very warm. Surprise is starting to heat up as well at 1300 degrees. The safe spots seem to be Chandler and Mesa. Scottsdale is doing okay so far, but you know, again, I'm not your dad, but I would get out. I think steel boils at about this temperature. So Cape Creek, there's probably nothing left up there. If you look at the height of the cone and it's really flat like this, I know from that, that for the next 12 hours, there's not going to be any rain. Here's a little carpenter, carpenter ant, and they actually do kill some of the red ants sometimes. But these, these guys are a great indicator of rain coming up. If that cone is grown up and is high and is peaked, I know from that, that in the next 12 hours, we're going to have a rain because their soft bodies really feel the pressure change. And so when there's a low pressure system moving in, they feel it and they start to build up their cone to be much higher. If you happen to notice the cones in your yard are all of a sudden really oddly high, then better get ready. You've got a heavy rain coming. So they're good to indicate a change in the systems and especially within 12 hours great to tell you if rain is coming so keep an eye out for that that's a good predictor of weather at least for rain here's a fun fact you may have heard that ants heard aphids they didn't heard them they heard them h-e-r-d that's true ants do move aphids around go see that aphid video to find out why you even have aphids what are they an indicator of and then they actually drink the liquid sugary oops that comes out the other end of the aphids so that's just a neat thing to know that ants are not just indicators in your lawn or in your grass or in your soil but they're also hmm pastoralists herding aphids wow so if you have ants do you say oh i hate having ants ants are actually necessary they're a good indicator they're improving your soil they're indicating that the soil is really sandy, at least the soil living ants, or dry. Maybe you're in clay soil and you get ants, but that's because the soil gets really dry. And they're really trying to do a job. Don't get rid of them. If you have carpenter ants, I'd say check your eaves, check the north side of the house. You probably have water infiltration somewhere and is rotting your wall. So they're actually trying to save you money as much as you don't like them. Check that out and, and take a look of why you even have them. Why you have them in your lawn or your grass or your garden. It's because your soil is probably too sandy, too dry for worms. So that's the general indicator. They indicate a drier, sandier site than what worms like. Hope you learned something. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye. Hey, please subscribe and check out our latest video.
Yeah, I'm gonna have to back, but I'm gonna have to steal points about this episode.